tonight, the Elite regain the Trios Championships here in Los Angeles, the state and the city of Scumbag. No, I'm just kidding. What's going on, everybody? Uh, coming off of uh, the WWE is sold slash not sold. Just kidding, not kidding. We needed something like this. Tonight was a, a fun night as far as I'm concerned. This blue Monday Night Raw basketball dance away. Yeah, I mean, I'm just so sick of you little method devil worshipers. Donation coming in. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of you. Donation Thanks. coming in. Hulk Hogan's new theme song will go like this. I am a real Arabian. Fight for the rights of only men. <laughs> Oh, my God. Good Lord. Oh, boy. I can't believe you just said that. You know? <laughs> Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Saudi Arabian. That's great Good stuff, Lord. man. That's great stuff, brother. Oh, no, I deleted it. Oh, no. Hit the intro. Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement what? with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone, uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on twitter's fucking pathetic so please nobody oh. listen to anything involving a guy named joe cronin because it's just so fucking sad talk about the one thing that I know I know for a fact this is on everybody's mind and the one fact that's on everybody's mind about tonight's AEW Dynamite is not exactly what you guys are thinking it's what I was thinking the whole time and Gerald Armstrong thank you for the first donation of the night man right off the bat it was funny by the way pretty it was pretty funny shit let's be honest Gerald you're always funny but, no, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. That's right. You may have seen it. I sure did. You guessed it. This cocksucker who stood up for, like, most of the show. Hey, fuckhead in the blue fucking shirt. Sit the fuck down, bro. No one else is fucking standing. Why are you? You scumbag. Look at this scumbag piece of trash. What, it, what you can't see, so you got to stand up? You look like you're fucking huge. Why are you standing up? What a scumbag. Looks like a fucking Jerry Garcia fucking Antifa member out there in L.A. Look at this cocksucker. You see anybody else standing, you blueberry looking fuck? You see anybody else standing? By the way, get a new hat, motherfucker. What are you trying to copy my Adidas hat? You scumbag copycat piece of trash. Look at you copying me with that fucking Adidas hat. You piss ant piece of trash. I don't believe it, man. This guy wouldn't sit the fuck down. I kept looking. He's still standing. He's still standing. He's still standing. Bro, what's wrong with you, dude? You got a chair for a reason, dude. Sit the fuck down. What are you, fucking special? Four eyes, huh? God damn, what a piece of trash this guy is. Unbelievable. Dressed like a goddamn blueberry, and he just stands up. What a scumbag. Entitled piece of trash. That's what I'll say. Entitled piece of trash. That's what you are. Gerald Armstrong, $3 dono. Thank you, sir. Dance off the concrete. Let's go I to the mean, donations again. I'm just so again. sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. Unbelievable that he would stand. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. 
How did Death Triangle choke when they were leading 3 and 1? It makes them look like morons for letting them come back. It's not real. Also, Tua is not going to play this Sunday. We are going to get smacked. Yep. Tua needs to go. Hopefully we get Lamar Jackson next season. You're done. I agree, Picharo. I picked the Buffalo Bills to win the Super Bowl, and I'm not changing my pick, brother, since day week two. Since week two. He's standing for BLM. Oh, that's right. That would be his excuse, right? That's how they get around it, their privilege. I get to stand. <laughs> I get to stand, brother. Go ahead and stand, bro. Go ahead and stand. Stand all day. Stand all night. AW was delightful tonight. Moxley opens it up. I'm going to go into the Discord now. We're going to get right to it, guys. We covered a lot of WWE this week, but tonight it's all about AEW and whatever else you want to talk about. Um, I I uh, enjoyed this show uh, quite a bit tonight for the most part. So uh, I I'm thankful that I just got two hours of what I would say was, uh, you know, a, a solid wrestling night, to be honest. It had a little bit of, you know, everything I like mixed in. Um, you know, it might have been it might have been a couple other things we could have thrown in to make it a more perfect show. But I mean, what you know what I mean? You're not gonna, you know, that's ridiculous. To, you know, this is not. I'm not expecting a ten or a nine every week, and I'm not even always expecting an eight. Um, tonight, I think we got close. I think we got somewhere in the realm of a six to a seven. I, I'm gonna give tonight some kind of a seven out of ten because I really did like it. Um, what the fuck is that noise? I don't know if that's Bacharo, but Bacharo, I'm going to mute you for a second. And then we'll hear from Bacharo, maybe. Oh, no, that's Rostafa. I'm going to mute him. Hang on a second, Rostafa. Give me a minute. Um, I'll unmute you guys in a second. But let's bring in the man who just got torn a new asshole by a Dave Rose. Well, I didn't know about that, but okay. All right. How are you doing tonight? I'm good doing show. good, man. Um, 7.75. For me. All right. Right away. Listen, yep. let's start right at the beginning. Because, first of all, I want to comment on the look. I'm liking this look even more now. They changed the guardrails this week. Did they do that last week? Because I didn't notice that. Did you to notice? To be quite honest, it had to be point, pointed out to me about uh, a lot of the changes. Because I was just... Last, last week's show was fucking phenomenal. So I was more focused on the action than, you know, the little frivolous type things. But... Uh, You'd have to tell me, man. Yeah, I, so I, I see that the, the it looks like the guardrails are different. They're not even guardrails anymore. I don't know if they fabricated these themselves or if they made these themselves or what they did, but it, it, it almost appears as if they're guardrails with um, welded-on sh uh, sheet metal to make them square. So they're like they're a couple inches thick and they're square. And then they put a cover-up image over them. And it looks really good. And not only does it look good, but it does protect the fans a little bit more because they don't break every six feet, it looks like. They stay together. They're solid. But they also make a large crashing sound, which is great. Because so now the guardrails won't bend in and break a fan's face. I always comment on this and joke about it. That I mean, there were lawsuits in the past in WWE because and there were there were several close calls even in AEW. Oh, re oh, certainly all the time we see it, and you see the fans too. They they're surprised when the guardrail smashes into their chest or their body or whatever it is, and the fans are like, "Oh!" And you see the fan go, "Ow!" And you're like, "Wow, look, that guy just got hurt." And so Tommy Dreamer talked about this once at a live indie event, and so you know for that reason, I think this is a smart thing to do because I, I, I don't want them to stop throwing wrestlers into the guardrails and to have those shitty WWE ones that they have. So this is a great compromise. It's solid. It's more solid. It doesn't bend in and smash in at the fans. It doesn't have holes in it so the wrestler's legs can't kick the fan in the balls or something. So it's it's completely covered, flat, but it's still light so you can smash into it. So I, I think whoever designed this or even thought to design this, whether it's Tony Khan or whoever, it Man, is this is a weird thing to talk about, but yes, it is very smart. Hats off to them. Oh, I, I guarantee almost no other wrestling show comments on this, by the, the way. Viral, 
kind of looked a little different to me. I don't know if, if maybe I'm imagining things, but to me, somehow the pyro looked a little different. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about I didn't notice that part. I'm sure it could have been. I, I also think the coverings make it look like it's actually illuminated, even though it's not. So that's another great point. You know, these these beautifully um, clothed things that are laying over the steel guardrail, they look yeah. like they're illuminated. Yeah, I, that I did notice as well, yep. Yeah, so everything looks beautiful. Yeah, and things looking back to it now, seeing a few screens, like, yeah, that I didn't notice that last week. That's different, obviously. So there's a, a, a very big visual change to what we're seeing. I still think that they're missing maybe white ropes or a white middle rope or something else to sort of – that's yellow, me. black and yellow. I'll take that, but it doesn't go with the color scheme they got going on, so I could see them not doing that. enough white as it is. Do red, white, and blue. <laughs> Fuck it. Do red, white, and blue. Um, yeah. So anyway – uh, everyone, those are the aesthetics of the show. I just wanted to quickly mention that I think the aesthetics of the show are a wonderful upgrade. Hats off to whoever thought of that and created that. Um, if you want to donate tonight, the donation link is where it always is at the top of the chat. You can click on it, expand it, use the link to Streamlabs Donate if you want to support this channel or Super Chat. And certainly we want you to subscribe and hit the like button because we're not even at 69 likes. With 300 people watching, that's pathetic. Um, so let's hit that like button and get to at least a hundred. Um, big news about AEW that I wanted to talk about. We got great news. We got the devious one. We got Rastafa, Bashara. We got a few people on the call. It's going to be a good time. Where do you want to start? You want to start with the news or you want to start with the first yeah, match? Let's go to the news and then we can get into the match. But okay, yeah. so earlier today was announced. I'm sure you know Rastafa is that uh, Tony Khan has publicly said that they're going to be doing live events. That not only do they notice that um, desire within the market, but that there are several. Well, there's a lot of people within the uh, roster that do want to participate in live events, and he cited his large roster being able to accomplish that. So he says they're going ahead with live events now do we have confirmation of whether or not that's going to start this year and if so how many per week no, that's all i know is what i've said okay just good to know. yeah because i got word of that this morning and i wasn't shocked by that but i also knew that they've only been around for what three years and they've just been trying to just build little it by was little inevitable. it was inevitable and this was always in their plan they wanted to do live shows eventually yeah, plus also you put more focus on, again, not the fact that we don't like that there's a lot of titles in the company already, but this just gives more of, a, of an excuse to say, hey, there's a lot of belts that are not necessarily defended on TV. We can defend them at the live shows. And if there's ever a title change, we can always do like that little live cam thing and show it on one of the main shows. You can also appease some of the wrestlers this way with keeping them a little bit busy. Maybe they can make an, a little bit extra money because of it. Um, hopefully that, hopefully it's going to solve a lot of little problems, you know, hopefully. Um, right. And then we're not going to have like a TNA 2010, 2011 issue where they were barely selling out live events anywhere. Yeah. That I would be a little concerned with some of that, but as long as they're smart, you know, I hope that they, I almost wish that they would almost run like indie spots, not, not necessarily indie spots, but even smaller locations. You know what I mean? Like how, how many you know, because if they don't sell a lot of tickets, it'd be nice if they could run theaters and small little arena theaters like that that only carry up to 3,000 to 4,000 people. I think that would be really good if they... But I don't know the logistics of it, so I don't really know. But it would be fun if they could do those sort of live events. And notwithstanding the fact that we also have another company under Tony Khan of Ring of Honor, so that's also going to preoccupy his time, so... Um, I don't know any word yet based upon what I've been reading as far as any close, you know, knit to a television deal or security within Jesus. that. I fucking but, can't stand the Ring of Honor stuff. Yeah, I know. I know, man. But, I, I, dude, they're eventually going to get a television deal no, they're this not. year or next year. Oh, I you bet don't think so? No, I don't think so. I've been saying this. People told me it was going to happen months ago, this month, that month. It's never. It's not happening. What, what, where? You know, where? who wants Ring of Honor on their TV right now? Well, apparently there's a market for it because every time when they do a Ring of Honor event, it always sells out. That doesn't mean there's a TV market for it. Well, well no, I mean, they prove that there is, but... Uh, Let me tell know, you something. I'll tell you where there's a market for it. There's a market for it on mm -hmm. Crackle. There's a market for it on HBO, maybe. Netflix, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. There's a market for it on apps, but there, I, don't I just don't believe there's a TV market. I mean, there is a little bit, but you know, I don't think... It's going to happen. Put it that way. I mean, if I was a, if you're a TV network, 
are where, where are you look? Let me ask you something, TV Network. Are you looking for thirty thousand to three hundred thousand viewers? And most of them are going to say, eh. "Okay, if you really want to go that way, just because of uh, what's her name now, Monet, Sasha, Sasha Monet, or is it Mercedes Monet? Where's Mercedes. She? Yeah, yeah, Mercedes Monet." Yeah, NJPW rose 47,000 subscribers just from her um, having that uh, that fight there yep. at uh, Wrestle Kingdom. And this whole event that's coming up, uh, Battle in the Valley, I believe it's called. Yeah. Um, it's sold out, basically. And there's just one match, them. What does this have to do with Ring of Honor? I'm confused. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is that you're making it sound like um there's no demand and they said the same thing about her and njpw and njpw right now is doing extremely well by setting up all these different ways for you to watch them on these uh internet channels and such right that there is a demand there's and a the demand on the apps i just said away. this there's a demand on the apps but there's not a demand on tv <laughs> No, but it, Tony Khan has already talked about the fact that that, that there was demand there was demand for that for it to be on TV, which is why he worked towards getting that TV deal. So they're working towards that. Also, the, also the fact that NJPW, even in the states over the past like six years, seven years, have been really working hard trying to get the American market to definitely fester TV time, even though it's not a big rating. Plus, also live event attendance has been doing very, very well. Uh, with the intricate promotions, whether it be through AEW now or even, you know, back when PWG was still on fire with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega still participating there, there's still a demand even in that market. But yeah, I could definitely see, like I said, Ring of Honor, even if they only land on a on an app network, that's still going in the right direction. But that's what and I'm telling fact, you. I'm literally telling you that, that they're not going to land on some cable network. They're going to land on an app. If they do, however, land on a cable network, I wouldn't be surprised by that also. So right now, it's still up in the air, but anything is possible at this point. So again, we don't know yet, but yeah. we're pretty sure within the next year or two, there's going to be some significance with Ring of Honor and some type of televised... Wait a minute. Uh, I, to, people were saying this was going to be announced like months ago. Now it's not going to be announced for a year or two? I'm just I'm just literally giving a hyperbole opinion on it because, like I said, we found this out, what, mid-2022 when he made the announcement live on Dynamite? And, again, they're still working the, the pay-per-views. They're still trying to build up their market again because, at this point, Ring of Honor has had, what, well, at this point under Tony I'm going to kill myself. Like, two two, uh, two pay-per-views. We literally pay we just watched a great AEW show, and we're talking about Ring of Honor. I just don't understand. It's the news, bro. We're talking about the news. I, 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 <laughs> the fact is that it, they're pursuing TV deals. Okay, so we can move on now if you'd like yeah. and just go to, straight to the I hope Saudi program. Arabia buys Ring of Honor. How about that? <laughs> well, then it'll be fucking huge. They will be huge, then. just like their golf, right. just like their golf uh, professional golf uh, club that can't get a TV deal. Live, uh, well, and they'll end up buying those TV sh stations anyways. I mean, I, right? <laughs> Saudi Arabia owns a fucking goddamn professional golf fucking club or whatever. It is. No, not club. They own a a golf club. <laughs> What's the word? Uh, league. League. They own a goddamn golfing league. <laughs> they get 200,000 viewers, and they can't get a TV deal. Oh, my gosh. All right, do you want to get started with the rundown of the show here? Uh, sh sure, yeah, now that I've been demoralized. To go. Let's. This is. Let me just say this really quickly. Moxley has become a shit bore in the ring, and Adam Hangman Page is a fucking I asshole idiot. But let me explain something. Please this, explain this. This was this was a good match. It was a good match. It was a good match. Yeah, I and like the, it. And the the crowd already within the first two minutes were going gaga, and the whole pace of the match was actually really good. Now, obviously, I felt that Hangman in many respects deserved the Duke on this one, uh, just because of the buildup and the that really terrible to... though. He always does though, but he sounded terrible. Oh no! Oh no! I mean, I'm just saying as far as like you know what we were going to be expecting because again he got injured. Obviously, he was going to lose that match the last time around in the buildup between MJF and uh, John Moxley. But, you know, this was like his time to shine. And they both, I mean, again, notwithstanding the fact that I pretty much am not a big fan of when they get together and they fight. But for what it was and the story going into it, it was good enough as it was. And the crowd liked it. And if the crowd liked it in such a way, then I'm going to react to it in a certain way. So it gets a pass for me. 
Now, what was up with the commentary table too to start? I like it was just Taz and it was uh, Taz, Excalibur, and um, Tony Schiavone. Schiavone. Sometimes Tony Schiavone. It didn't feel like he was even there. Sometimes. No, he was there. I think it was mainly Taz, and he did this a lot tonight. I mean, he does it more or less, you know, usually like when he's on commentary. But he always talks about. You know what I mean? How like, you know, how the body is like, you know, dealt with if it's in a certain hold and what happens to the body as it's, you know, within like a certain type of submission hold. Yeah, I like Excalibur, that. Excalibur talking about the history of the background between the two and then Tony just adding color. Yeah, but there were times tonight where Tony was missing completely. Did you notice um, that? Like they cut to them and there was two of them at the table several um, times. I think he was just taking he wasn't really speak like he was there you could hear sometimes he would talk and like oh and sort of like he backed off and that somebody else talked i think tony was sick is what i'm trying to say because he was bizarrely and he was on tv at one point though and he seemed fine in the ring but man on commentary tonight tony shivani was a mess and he's 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 hit or miss now sometimes he's great and then sometimes he's just off and you know jr slowly was doing that too but tony was actually the better one for a while more solid Tonight, Tony Schiavone was bizarre tonight. By the way, Jim Cornette's going to have a field day tomorrow on his podcast when he's just going to bury Hangman and John Mox. He's like going, he nobody did that the other day. Driver on one. Yeah, I, I listen, I get it, and I know they're, I get what he's going to pick apart as far as wrestling-wise, but I only just – I look for what entertains me, and, and I was entertained by the match. And like I said, Moxley has been doing the same repetitive shit recently that's annoyed me. Hangman drives me nuts on the promo, but tonight I thought Hangman did a great job selling and being charismatic against Moxley. I thought Moxley seemed like he was trying to put some extra effort into it, and then in the end, Hangman actually gets the win, and obviously it seems like, hopefully, finally, Moxley gets his goddamn fucking vacation. Yeah, and also the fact that they're playing up the storyline of how now all of a sudden now Hangman apparently injured supposedly in storyline uh, Moxley because Moxley got his bell rung after the Buckshot Lariat, doing a repeat of that. So wh- whether or not he gets his vacation or not, we'll pretty much know about within I, the next like week or so. I figured um, him losing. I w- when I saw him lose, I was like, oh, this is his vacation. And then when I saw the injury after, I said, oh, this is definitely his vacation. Could be he might be, he might be back next week. I'll be shocked. We I'll be know. shocked. I see him next. I will. I'll tell you what. I'll be shocked if we see him. I mean that because then it's like okay, when the hell are you going to get your vacation? You just literally did an injury write off angle. It seems like, but I, but if he's back, yeah. then what? Like I'm confused. Yeah. So um, Tony Schiavone is in the ring and he is says I'm going to introduce this guy, but I don't know how I feel about it. Next thing you know, Adam Cole's music hit. Uh, the place goes ape. Uh, Adam Cole's basically emotional about the whole coming back thing. He's got good news. He's got bad news. You know, the good news is, is that, you know what I mean? Again, I've been, you know, getting support by wrestling fans from all around the world. I'm constantly, uh, you know, being told by, you know, that like, you know, I'm in good hands. Like, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. Then the bad news basically, and he swerves us by saying the bad news is for the entire AEW roster. He's back. Um, what was your feelings about the promo A and B? Where do we see Adam Cole go from here? Um, go ahead, Dave. Unless you want me no, to go. Say anything. Oh, no, I was just going to let you go first, but I'll, I'll go if you want. Yeah, go ahead. So Adam Cole, um, it was a little cliche in a way, but at the same time, the idea of someone coming in the ring to give an update on their health status has been done so many times now that it's just where you're so used to it. You don't know if they're about to shock you and mention they won't be back. You don't know if he's about to say, hey, I feel better, but I'm not back yet. Or you don't know if he's going to say, I got to retire. Or you don't know if he's going to say, trick you and say, I got bad news for everybody else. Like, And that's what he did. So it was a little bit whatever. <coughs> but it was well done, actually, and I did enjoy it, and I thought it was good. And a good uh, pop for him. It yeah, was a good pop from the audience. Yes. Uh, he got to the point. Started- he got to the point, and um, yeah, it seems that um, he's he, he he's convinced in regards to the fact that he wants to uh, to face action. So, so I'm getting distracted from all that background noise. What is that? Is that Pacharo? Pacharo. Yeah, Pacharo. You know what you're doing, bro. There's a woman talking. All right, we're gonna like mute him. He does this all the time. I don't know why. He I get him on here, and then he I I didn't hear it. 
I had him actually lowered on my end. Let me. I'll just mute him. Bashar, I'll figure that out. Um. Okay. So the bottom line is like 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 Ramirez in the chat just said everything in pro wrestling is recycled. So like that's why I'm saying it's not a gotcha moment. Like oh you had to announce your health update, so I'm gonna say it's cliche. Well no I'm not. I'm, so what I'm telling you is so what it comes down to with an old bitch like me right with somebody who's jaded like me very jaded. It's gonna come down to how you did it and how you executed it. If I like it or not. And Adam Cole executed it well I think. So I liked it. I didn't know he was going to be here tonight, so that was exciting to me. What he said resonated with me after my two concussions in hockey and I had to give up playing hockey. I get what he was going through. I said this on the show. We did make I did make fun of him too. I did make fun of him about, you know, playing video games at home and these sort of things, but I also said like I understand he might be dealing with some anxiety and and scary shit. Right now, if he's having these concussion symptoms, I dealt with this as well for six to seven months. So I totally understand what he's going through. I did think it was a little bizarre in this day and age that he went and painted such a picture of concussion and brain damage and that sort of thing and then said he's coming back. You know what I mean? I was basically like, so is he just telling us that he wants to become Chris Benoit? Because he just told me about, you know, <laughs> he's throwing up, his head hurts, he's got all these problems for months and months and months and months and months, and now he's going to come back and bang around some more. So I just thought that was very interesting when years ago people were so careful about the head and saying those things, but now it's just like, no, it's okay. If I become brain damaged, it's all right. Now, I don't mind because I think you do recover and you can come back, and as long as he's been checked out, fine. You know, I just, um, you know, I wonder about the junior say out moment and those type of things as dark as it is, but hopefully he's all right, and uh, I thought it was a good segment, so good opening, good segment there, so at this point, I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm at about a seven for AEW at this point in the night, and I'm like, this is a good way to start, that's right, right. that's what I got on Adam Cole, uh, his pop, his return, crowd loved it, he was good, energetic, he got right to the point, it wasn't anything unbelievable, but it wasn't boring, um, and he got, and he got right as I was like, oh, oh, please get on with it. He was on with it every time. So perfect amount of time. Um, yeah. I was going to say, it wasn't not like long, the other, it's, it's certainly not like the other Adam that, uh, oh. kind of takes too long when it comes to his promos. Oh yeah. 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 It wasn't like a long promo. Thank God. But it was, yeah, she said straight to the point, uh, no BS he practically gave us, he even gave us a little bit of insight what he went on, like on a nightly basis, like he'd wake up three, four o'clock in the morning feeling agitated, not knowing what was going on with his system and, you know, constantly going to doctors to verify what he's got going on, going to doctor to doctor. So it was um, it, very simple, straight to the point. And it, was, and it had to be because if he had over exaggerated it, then I think yeah. it would have overshadowed his comeback. It's also, I think for some reason, the crowd wasn't going to, a lot of people don't want to put up with the woe is me, too much woe is me because they've yeah. heard it. Yeah, everyone's going through so much stuff now in the world, and also they've heard this stuff a million times, and they know he makes a good amount of money, and they know he makes money on his video game stuff, and they know all these other things. So for him to sit there, and even though he sh- he should have the right to, because he's these health issues are major, and he could really go into his struggles. I just think people, they do care, and they do want to hear his struggle a little bit and hear about some of it. But I don't think people now, right now want to hear too much of someone's struggle because everyone's struggling with so much. You know what I mean? It's something I've noticed in the vibe around the world over the last uh, few years. You know, years ago I would talk about my issues and a lot of people would really, you know, oh, I've had that with me too and I relate and we let's all relate together with our troubles. But nowadays people acknowledge your problem but they don't want to hear you go on and on and on about it too long you know i'm getting guilty of that myself um so you can even hear it in the crowd when he said things like i dealt with this you know the crowd didn't really go oh or like mm, they just were kind of like all right um and the guy was literally being genuine so he did he really did a good job adam cole did a good job of getting to the point and getting the stuff out that he needed to get out anyway i guess uh if that's all on adam cole uh, so far so good though on AEW yep. at this point Yep. Backstage, the acclaimed uh, talking about their plans for Rampage, saying that uh, they're going to uh, barely get their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and all that jazz. They even mentioned, uh, I think it was a, 
some of their hero references and various different uh, you know things that they could relate to. Well, that was funny. They said that what's his face could relate to, and they named a bunch of canceled Republican people. I guess I don't pretty know. much, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we go to the tag match with Jungle Boy or and then Hook. They're calling him Jungle Hook. Right. Uh, which, I, which by the way, um, you know, a lot of people have a big problem with this. They're like, oh, my God. Like, I don't have a problem with it. All I care about is that they don't mix the music together. That's all I care. I mean, again, the na- the names, the names, man. It, it just harkens back to, like, mm. mid mid. 2000 teens of wwe just putting names together for the sake of it and it's just right. like uh and then we of course they're taking on uh big bill and lee moriarty and uh i thought the match was and their was their deep. name is really weird too jingle bells that's weird <laughs> that's weird and, and yeah they, they the match was decent as it was then of course uh there was a there was at one point there was a uh uh, a suicide dive that got interrupted. Uh, Morrisley was about to go for a choke slam, and that got disrupted. Um, and uh, there were a few moments in the match. Obviously, the highlight was Hook uh, going for a T-bone suplex on uh, Moriarty, and it was it was cool. Um, but man, it just um, it, it 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 just one of those matches where it was just like it was just like one of those like you know ooh and odd because like these guys can work. And uh, yes, they can work. It's just that, you know, I just felt going forward with this, I don't know how much mileage you'll get out of it, especially since that hook is really made for a solo gig. I don't really see him being too much tag team wrestling in the near future at all. Well, I just pray to God that that hair either grows in or he shaves it because that that patchy fucking hair on his chest, I want to puke, bro. I don't know why. I know that I got uh, he looks like uh, nerdy. Yeah, dude. I, some I don't know what it is, man. I don't know what's wrong with me, but there's something disgusting. I don't like patchy faces, and I have one, but I I and I, and I only do it because my wife says so. But dude, the, the the grossest thing ever is patchy hair on your chest. You know what I mean? Like it's like the chest is all smooth, and then there's prickly in areas, and then there's big little puffs of pube-looking curls coming up in different spots. Like ugh. Hook, man, I'm going to throw up, bro. Just shave that shit. You look fucking bizarre, bro. Like, something ain't grown in all the way. Like, that, it, something didn't grow right. Like, puberty got interrupted or something, dude. Like, what the fuck? Uh, and here, oh, my God, it's turkey time. We're here with Devious Dave Rose, Rastafa. And uh, it's time for a little fucking turkey break with the Soundwave 92. What if they believe us? If the turkeys What if the turkeys ate us? Instead of they believe us? What if the turkeys ate us? Instead of mashed potatoes? Thanksgiving was a little bit different. Instead, those turkeys. This is definitely the top donation so far. This be my entrance music. This would be your entrance music, actually. Uh, almost as long as that uh, Undertaker to get to the ring. <laughs> The Soundwave 92 coming in as always like a badass. We're a little bit of the way through the AEW Dynamite reviews. We continue. Hit the like button, stick the thumb on my ass, and let's hear what Soundwave has to say in the donation. Very fun show, but wasn't as good as last week's. Main event finish got spoiled by Taz. Mail sign. Really? 
Favorite match was easily Konosuk vs. Brian. Action Andretti wasn't Ricky Stark's good but he spoke nothing but facts about Semi. 7. Five. 7 good out of 10. Actually, good points. Yeah. Those, those are really good points. Let's start with... Uh, I did not hear the Taz spoiled anything. Did, did you know what he's talking about? I mi- I guess I missed that. Um, I not getting what he's saying. Unfortunately, if he if he explains it in the chat, maybe I'll try to like you know. Uh, I normally I pick. By the way, first of all, if that's the case, do you understand that that makes four weeks in a row that I'll be criticizing Taz for breaking the fourth wall of the wrestling business on live commentary? Like, but the thing is, he's basically done that his entire career, though. Dude, has he really? I, I fucking hate him, then. Like, Taz, he's... what are you doing, dude? Like, can somebody like can somebody pull my last three criticisms of Taz, put them together, and then take tonight if this is the case? Because, dude, he, mul- he constantly breaks the fourth wall and says something that's, like, behind the scenes on commentary. And you're like, what are you doing? So now you're telling I mean, me tonight. Well, he- remember, he came from ECW, so Joey Styles would practically do that on a weekly basis himself. That's retarded. Like, what are you doing? Like, it's not, dude. We're it's supposed to not be real, Taz. You know that? Like, it's I, still real to me. Damn it! I don't know, like, what he's doing. Like, I've criticized Taz now for two or three times over the past five weeks, and you're telling me that tonight he gave away the finish somehow? Oh, he did this in TNA. See, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Why is Taz yeah. employed then? Taz, what are you fucking doing? What is you fucking midget fuck, Taz? You little tiny fat midget. <laughs> I mean, seriously, dude. No, now yeah, I'm, get, I'm really starting to get angry. And why doesn't Jim Cornette call this out then? I don't hear Jim Cornette bitching about this. I don't listen to a ton of Jim Cornette, but I mean, I haven't heard him call this out. Cornette, can you get on this already, you four-eyed fucking cunt? Or are you too busy looking over at that fat pig sitting in your living room texting some fucking young boy, you piece isn't of fucking the shit? One that, uh, isn't the, he the one that uh, cucks out to his wife and yes. watches guys? Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So he should call out Taz. Why don't you call out Taz, motherfucker? How about that? He might get choked out, and he might like it. I don't know. Uh, backstage, Orange Cassidy is doing an interview with uh, Paul Watcher Hauser, along with Dan Housen. Uh, basically, they're going to do something on uh, on Rampage. Which, by the way, they didn't even make a graphic for Hauser. Like they're so, <laughs> they didn't have the time to put his graphic up. They put like his name and everything like on the on the screen, but they didn't had, didn't have enough time to at least put an image saying, "Hey, he's coming to Rampage." Mm. Um, Hauser asked Cassidy if things are okay between him and the best friends. Trent Beretta and Chuck Taylor uh, show up and they seemingly say, yeah, everything's fine. And then they do like some type of like little. That was hand. weird. Yeah. Where like they're, they're trying not to break character, but then they break character and it just looks weird. Yeah. It, it, that was like Karen Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett, like uh, TNA vibes at like uh, bound. No, it wasn't bound for what was it? Victory road type vibes. And yes, I do remember it was a horrible pay per view. That's when Jeff uh, got uh, you know inebriated and decided to lose the title in like barely a minute. But um, then, of course, we go towards uh, Brian Danielson taking on uh, Takashita, and before the match even starts, MJF comes out to a great pop, and uh, he's basically agging on on LA. He's talking about uh, Freddie Prince Jr. Uh, Ken, uh, I can't. I always mispronounce his name. Uh, Juong, am I pronouncing that right? Yong, Yong, thank you. And uh, both actors, and of course, Freddie Prince Jr., we also know from the wrestling world as a writer, uh, mentioning that he, you know, he's a Scooby Doo douchebag and all that jazz. And then finally, Brian Danielson's music comes out, and this is another thing that I'm noticing he's still coming out of the heel entrance. Like, is he still labeled a heel, even though he's technically a babyface? Are you talking about MJF? No, no, I was talking about Brian Danielson. Oh, um, is there is I don't there know. I are I there different? I, I I thought they got rid of the entrances. This, yeah, no, 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 no. Brian is still coming out of the heel. Like, yeah, but so I thought... basically the heels are coming out. The heels are coming out. If you're watching on your screen, they're coming out on the left. The baby faces are coming out onto the right. Even though they got rid of that, they're still coming out from those entrances as if they, you know. Oh, I didn't notice were, yet. Like, yeah, so it's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird seeing that. But at any rate, so the the match starts, and yes, this match was the match of the night. There's no arguments, yeah. there's no substitutes. Um, hard hitting. And by the way, Takashita, he's an amazing athlete. When MJF said "take a shit," dude, I mean that was just. I mean, I know, I know, but that was funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 MJF did a great job tonight. Actually. What a promo! We like. How do we grease over that, dude? MJF, 
what a fucking great promo. And just how he was shitting on all these people. Like, and, and uh, again, with the actor, uh, uh, Jung there, and just said that he was, you know, last famous 20 years ago. And then, you know, going for Freddie Prince Jr. Like, just the whole promo that he did fit perfectly with his character. And they didn't hop in the ring and make him look stupid either. They, he buried them and yep. stay out there, dummy. And then ran off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know, yeah, but that's that was the best part for me of the promo where he was like literally he's like duking and driving out of the ring and he finally gets out. And the way that he ran, I wish Jim Ross would have said he's running like a scalded dog. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, I wish we had a good announcer tonight. The commentary was a little bit the see tonight was one of those nights where the commentary was not great. Again, Excalibur, even though Excalibur isn't exactly my thing, but what I do like about Excalibur is he's very smart and um He's fine where he is, but they're just. I wish Excalibur was there as like the guy who does the promos in between the segments and the guy who jumps in when there's really technical stuff going on and things like that. And I wish they had a color guy who was loud and boisterous, you know, JR. Yeah, like, in his a, best. like a Bobby Heaton type of thing. Where it's no, like, no, I, I, Bobby Heaton. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wish then they had that. I would love it if they had Excalibur, the nerd who knows all the stats and the dorky things, and then you can do the transitions. And then they had the JR type who was ready to go, and then they had a Bobby Heenan. That would be the best. And who's the Bobby Heenan they could have? And he's bald. Uh, he used to have luscious hair and Cyrus the Virus. Don Callis. Don Callis could be on that commentary table with. You know, a JR that was eight, eight, eight out of ten. He but was there for a bit, though. And it, I liked it. Yep, I did. And I, yeah, he's it, always Taz great. Sucks. He's he's never had a bad gig on commentary. Yeah, he's really good uh, commentary. You know, and Taz is good. You know, here's the thing. I, I'm saying all this bad stuff about Taz. But, you know, there are things I like about Taz when he, when he drops those little color commentary things about, you know, this is the movie, put him in, and, man, imagine if this happened. And there are things that Taz do, does that are really good. Like, I mean, I feel kind of crappy that I only picked the bad stuff. But the breaking of the fourth wall stuff is just so crazy to me that that like is like like I eliminate you like you got to get off like you have to stop doing this on commentary. So other than that, Taz would be all right. But yikes! I agree. I mean, again, I remember when he went from SmackDown right to ECW or whenever that around like 2006. I mean, he was still kind of the same Taz, but by the time he went to TNA. He was breaking the wall so much, and he was not even focusing more so on the action than he used to. That's when I just said, I'm done with this crap. And that's how, that's actually the reason why I got blocked by him on Twitter, because I kept on saying, dude, will you stop taking off the attention off what's going on in the ring? And then, you know, he obviously disagrees with that. But nonetheless, uh, the match. Um, God, where do I even begin? Uh, Takashita, as I said, great athlete. We already saw him a number of different bouts uh, before last year and uh, was obviously, you know, uh, an eye catcher when it comes to like being wrestling more so in the States. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Dave? Because, I mean, you saw what I saw and I was just in disbelief. It was a great match, very hard hitting, uh, great moves. And um, both of them proved that they're still you know, relevant that they still got it and that they were able to put on a good show specifically with uh, just telling a tale in the in the ring with the wrestling. So that you, know, you didn't yeah. need to fucking do it. There was already enough buildup as it was. There's was no need to go into further um, promos or anything like that. They got right down to business and uh, it, it surely was probably the highlight of the night, at least when it comes to uh, to wrestling. I thought it, it felt like a great Japanese, classic Japanese wrestling match. But again, it it, it translated well in the American style, if that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, uh, you know what? You just nailed it. And I've been saying this, too. For some reason, when they do these Japanese style matches, it works out wonderful here. I don't know why. It's like, what, a different flair or something? I don't know. Like a different, a slightly different take on what they do in New Japan all the time. Do you know what I'm saying? Like what you just yeah, said. Yeah, like, like for example. I only know what you're saying, Joe. And I think it's just because it's never been done right or at least the way that AEW is doing it because it's not like the Japanese style has changed. Uh, and it's not like there aren't people who have wrestled in Japan, know the style, and can wrestle with it. It's, I guess, the promotion that puts it up and how they present it because you know they've tried that in in sorry in, in wwe for example and and it obviously has fallen flat but the way that they do it in in aew just seems to work it could also be the talent that they're bringing in maybe it's maybe these people just know how to um connect to the american audience 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. It's the pacing or, or something they do with it. I don't know because you see – and listen, I've seen plenty of New Japan matches where I fell in love with them and or I liked them and stuff like that, but – it's not like the young bucks. The point where... here is that it connects with the North American audience, and that's what Rostov right. has said. And and absolutely, there's something about this match that certainly uh, cuts across that disconnect that we often see with, uh, with res- Japanese wrestling, for example. And you know, the audience is fucking tonight. The audience, I got to say, was quite uh, quite loud throughout the entire night. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what you just mentioned, like, for example, like a lot of times you watch a Japanese match and again, sort of kind of like Lucha Libre in a sense versus all this diving and like kicking out like, you know, at various amounts of times during a finish. And I'm like, this is another reason why I appreciate selling more because D- Brian Danielson, as experienced as he is, understands the art of storytelling. It's not just about what moves you hit. It's literally laying down, giving it time, let the audience take in what they just saw previously and this is this is honestly what i want to see most of the time in a wrestling match just the idea of just letting the match breathe and both these guys and again i'm not taking anything away from uh, takashita because he brought it those knife edge chops to the chest to brian danielson dude like there was even moments where the, even the audience were shushing each other going shh I, l- I like how uh, you, you brought it. It's just like to let the match breathe because I did definitely mm. see that with this match is that it was allowed to to go and, and the last match, which we'll talk about, but it was allowed to breathe and th- they were just allowed to go and do their thing. And I think it translated very well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I... <laughs> This is also those things where it's like, again, sometimes you wish, oh man, I wish I could see this on a pay-per-view. But the thing is, this is another reason why, again, it's... I think the reason why AEW wanted to do this and why Tony wanted to do this, because even though that they had a great show last week, again, it just didn't reflect in the ratings. Will it do it this week? Probably not, but it, I wouldn't be surprised if there was at least some type of boost, even just from a pure ethic of a wrestling stance in this way, because this obviously stole the show. But uh, backstage, uh, Juice Robinson uh, is doing an interview with Renee Paquette. Stole the and- show. And basically, uh, Juice is asking for a title shot with Darby Allen for the TNT Championship on Rampage, which is probably happening right now as we speak, because since it's a live event, right? Um, I hope it all works out, you know, with this match, and I hope it's definitely going to steal the show on Rampage. Uh, next match: Tony Storm and Soraya taking on Britt Baker and Jamie Hader. And this match was weird because it was a good the match. Heels obviously Bad the, ending. The heel- it was a good match, though. Ruined it by the, the ending, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. The heels got cheered. Obviously, the baby faces got booed. Um, I, I'm starting to wonder. Like, I like that though. That 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 gave me pleasure tonight. I mean, I'm wondering: is Tony Storm and Soraya like even remotely accepted, even after they debuted, like you know, months ago last year? Because it doesn't look like at this point. Because at this point, the, if the heels are getting more. Uh, more love than the baby faces and i wonder what's really really going to create a solid baby face going against a solid heel going forward problem is that haters too beloved D- B- baker works well as a face but she can also work very well as a heel but the problem is even as a heel people still want to support her uh yeah tony yeah. tony storm has done great i don't think he should she should have been awarded the title I don't think that the audience is supporting her enough to have been in that role. So maybe there's that resentment, but, um, you know, like, I I don't know. I think with Soraya, I think they were quite welcoming tonight's tonight's audience was a little strange. Yeah. Like, like in the words of uh, JR, I'm sorry, of Jerry, the King Lawler, it's bizarre world. Like when they were into the eyes on center in Jersey after mania 29. But, um, this, this was a little bit weird for me because as soon as, um, uh, you know, everything sort of kind of got, you know, got heated. Like, it's just booze and booze for the baby faces. And I'm trying to keep up. Finally, uh, Hikaru Shida comes out and uh, is starting to be in the corner of the baby faces. Uh, one thing leads to another where the baby faces start to get their comeback. Um, Hikaru Shida uh, throws in the kendo stick. Um, out of nowhere, the heels just pick up the kendo stick and just start beating the baby face uh, faces with it. They end up going for the finish. One, two, three. Your winners. Baker and Hater. Um again, Hater is getting cheered a lot. And this is like a good thing because it's gonna make when that when that turn hits, 
when uh, we're only assuming that sometime this year Baker's going to turn on Hater and it's going to start that feud, it's going to mean a lot. Right. And um, that's the only reason why I could definitely see, obviously, like, you know, the the bulk of the cheers and everything in this regard. But, man, I mean, I just feel bad for <laughs> – I just feel bad for all three of the women, including uh, Sheeta, Storm, and Soraya. So – I mean, I mean, again, like I, I really don't see what they're really going to be doing with Tony Storm going forward, other than just be, you know, jobbing pretty much. I mean, do you? Um, I mean, what do you see? What do you see her going forward for? Because honestly, I don't. Yeah, really I mean, I think you. No, I think you're nailing it. I think she's gonna. You know, they're setting it up right now. It's perfect. The more the audience likes her, the more you know, Brit can start to become sort of jealous, like the people are liking her. That was the plan. I'd always said that. I, you know, yeah. when I, I had said that it was necessary for Hater to win the title anyways because it, it obviously wasn't going to be working with Storm. Uh, the whole situation with uh, Thunder Rosa obviously is the way it is. So, and, and the audience was just so behind Hater that it, it would just have been stupid to not give her that title. But it set it up perfectly anyways because the seeds were set that um that baker was getting jealous of haters popularity so th- it just makes perfect sense that th- they set this up and there's going to be a contention for that title and uh uh Sheeta and storm and others can continue on with the um the women's uh league or did yeah it- <clears throat> yeah and, and of course obviously we have you know we have month uh, we have a few months for this to even be a big thing so we're good there's no rush with it but um i mean, I, I mean again i'm also trying to vis- visualize they this, look like, great before. the women i just man the women did a good job tonight i just really want to say that that ending did sour it but man they did a great uh job before that everybody looked beautiful and somebody in the chat oh. said like when, dude, AEW really should have launched their own OnlyFans. You know what I mean? You know, back in the days, back in the day, WWE would have the WWE calendar and the swimsuit edition and all these sort of things and whatever and whatnot. Why not launch AEW OnlyFans, you know, and put all the women on there? This week we're featuring Paige, you know, or whatever, Soraya. And, you know, and I, now they would be, and I know what you're going to say, well, they can't do that because it's like they'd be like canceled or something like that. Why? You know, why would they, why are all these women able to go and have OnlyFans and do whatever sexy things they want to do, but the company can't launch one? What if the company said to the women, hey, we got an opportunity here for a great idea. Who wants to be a part of it? They can still offer calendars and not go full, you know, pornographers. That's true. But this doesn't have to be pornography, right? It can simply be like, like shows that are adult oriented without, you know, going there. And also it allows the women to still have their own personal only fans where they go a little even more risque or doing whatever they want to do. So, uh, and they, I don't know, they could just, they could use it to make a profit and then pay the women, you know, pay the women more money. And, uh, potentially maybe some of the women would make a little more money than the guys would make because of it. So that, I don't know, I'm just thinking marketing and stuff like that. And, you know, you know, night the nighttime hot tub show. You know, on on thir- Thursday nights in the hot tub, and you know, shit like that. They have guys on the show too. We'll do whatever. Just do some shit with OnlyFans. Doesn't matter what it is. You know what I mean? Fucking who doesn't want to see? Um, you know, probably because the OnlyFans takes too much of a cut. They could probably do it cheaper if they released it exclusively on, on their, their own. own platform so they're Maybe. making a deal with that company what? <laughs> i don't know but then you gotta get the subscriptions and stuff like that i'm a sick bastard and i think of these things and i want to do them i don't care about what it looks like and the culture yes, looks you like are, and yes you do go get that money that's what I, that's what i'm about go get that money so, um, um Bert baker won um uh, with uh hater mm-hmm. in this match and you got mustafa <laughs> yeah we uh so yeah Sheeta looks shocked after the match which honestly you know, it's going to lead to something, but honestly, I, I'm just not invested. I mean, again, I thought it was a good match. I'm just not invested, obviously, what's going on with the baby faces, just based on the crowd's reaction. But moving on, uh, Eddie King. That, that tonight is different. In other nights, they've, you know, the, the heels have been booed. Yeah, no, no. It's not even just that. It's just the overall feel. I don't yeah. know. I'm just, like, responded from it. But I get it. A uh, lot of people were soured on that. You raised a piece of shit. They were. Magpole Mike just became a member again. Um, on the channel, he hasn't been one in a little bit, I think, but he's back. Magpul Mike is an OG. I just want to say thank you to him, man. Dude, you are an OG, man. Good to have you back, my friend. Thank you, dude. Um, Andre Lavandero, um, what did he ever do to you? What? Freddie Prince Jr.? Oh, he's going after Freddie Prince Jr. 
No, you know what? You know what? I'm surprised MJF didn't say, why don't you go back to the E and write some more shitty ideas or something like that? And he didn't do that, but that's still funny. Um, oh, you all douche, have buddy. decided to take <laughs> your hard earned scooper, scooper, money and to oh, fund shit. my show. Oh, Mac, to pull fund Mike. what I do, to fund what I believe in, to fund Venti my Cinco. godly ass. JCS Don't Army, donate to me. Donate to me. me. Yeah, man, I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> I gotta get out of here to go on uh, me. to get hard. Damn I. Come on. Yeah, here we go. Sunny Arabia. In my asshole. <laughs> Yo. Hey Joe, did you see the fake picture of Stephanie and Hunter in the dark elevation of the inside? I died laughing. Oh my god, no, I didn't see that. Would they print out like a cardboard cutout of them or some shit? Holy fuck, dude. Dave, I didn't see that. Dave, did you see that? Probably not. Nope. We don't watch that shit. Uh, Magpul Mike, thank you, man. I'll look for that. That's fucking hilarious. Dunkachino? I can't wait to don't see that. Mind if I do. It's a link. What's my name? Dunkachino. Dunkachino. I'm about 12 years Dunkachino. old, so I think shit like that's funny. I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. I know this is random, but I cannot stand flow from progressive. Mm. Mayhem from Allstate needs to run over flow with a steamroller and leave just white overalls and that hideous clutch cargo lipstick. That's right. And I know the guy, the Mayhem guy is is definitely more conservative. Flow is definitely a liberal. Now, I don't I don't care about either one and what they are, but you can tell. So there's already a hatred there. I can feel it. Uh, Blair Eliason, thank you for the 1111. Really appreciate that. Double Drew Bledsoe's in the donations. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, plus he was on uh, Rescue Me, man. He was like Tommy's brother. He was a great character. Love the, <laughs> love the mayhem guy. Oh, God. Oh, man. Um, you don't like white he, people, Rastafa, you scumbag? You realize I'm half European, right? Yeah, it doesn't count. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just fucking being mean. I'm getting – go ahead. Uh you damn Viking. Eddie yeah, Kingston basically. and Ortiz struggle <laughs> to get along in the promo backstage, but they're going to they're going to be taking on the Kings of the Black Throne uh, this coming Friday on Rampage. I'm um, pretty much going to be seeing like you know I guess a the spot uh, you know uh, breaking of the ways between the two. Um, probably going to go their separate ways. I don't know what you're going to really do with Ortiz after the fact, but um, you can find him I like something this. too. I like this. I like the, the the tension between the two. They're both fucking badasses, and they can fucking fight hard. Um, this contention that's that's being set up, it's obviously going to lead to some sort of rivalry that will probably go on for some time. And I know that the matches that we're going to get between those two is they're going to be fucking epic. They're going to be. They might even go hardcore and and well, almost guaranteed because you know fucking Kingston is down for that shit. Right, yeah, but my question is. Lovely. My question is, what are you going to do with Ortiz after the fact? Let let it play out, dude. Let, How about you see how the audience accepts him? Because even even when when Kingston's a babyface, people still want to cheer him, right? So let and yeah, he can still be a heel, but you know, you got to see how it goes. Just let it go. I want to see how this goes because I'd like this contention because there's been, again been this sort of a. a unspoken disagreement between the two and there's resentment and so forth as they're telling the story and they're both fucking you know they they talk shit and they're willing to beat the shit out of each other like this is to me i'm looking and and some people might overlook a story like this oh just these guys whatever no th i want to see this oh no i'm not going necessarily against the matches that they're, that they're gonna have my home deal is it's like as ortiz we you know obviously was in a tag you know, with Santana for a while. Now, as a singles, it's going to be a completely different animal for him. I mean, granted, can he be successful? I'm not saying he can't be. I'm just saying, who would you pair him with after this feud? And, you know, how would he venture again? I don't if Tony Khan had that thinking, then Hater would not be champion right now. He'd let the audience basically say, she needs to be champ. Just like fucking um, the, um, the acclaimed. They had stories. They were they were putting on stories that were going to have certain champions, but the audience basically voted on that one. And Tony Khan said, "You know what? These people have to be champs," and he made it happen. 
and he made it compelling with the stories. You can't deny that. Either acclaimed or fucking uh, hater. Both of them uh, were made champions. And uh, because of the audience turn, despite the fact that um, either with hater she was a heel, but he recognized, no, the, the audience wants her. This makes sense. And uh, with acclaim, too, it's like, oh, they're, they've just garnered such interest from the audience that we can't deny it to them. In various respects, yeah. I'm just like, because like I said, I'm just trying to foresee this in, some, in some sense. Let in it some play sense. out. Let, Let it play out. Why, do, play the game, why do you have to fucking be like, oh, we need to know what happened? No, how about we don't? How about we just let it play out and let them fight, see how the audience reacts, and then decide, okay, how are we going to book them in the future? How are we going to get, or what's, what happens with Ortiz next? Why not just let it be dictated? Because Ortiz can be a bad badass heel. He can easily, I, you know, go right back to that. Or maybe the audience just turns on for him so much that it becomes a baby face. Why not again, just let it play I, out? Again, he's been both. He's been both. It, both yes, he has. Been. But the thing is, though, it's not about what he's been in the past. It's what does the audience want now? What story are they going to tell right now that's going to either make them hate him or make them love him? So let them tell that story. You know, uh, Kingston can certainly tell a great story, and he knows how to work. Uh, and, yes, he's obviously difficult with some people and stuff, but uh, he's willing to take the beating and to help tell a story. Well, this is the case. I mean, why you're so desperate to like, I want to know the end story. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm not desperate as far as what's going to be the end result. My whole thing is, again, thinking six months from now. You know what I mean? Because this feud is going to wrap up within at least three to four months. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. Uh, we can move on. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to think ahead of the game. But at any rate, uh, Jericho Appreciation Society. I was a little bit nervous about this because I'm thinking, how much time is the main event going to lose? At first, mm. um, they go on. I think it was around like nine thirty that he came back from commercial. Uh, basically, Jericho's hyping themselves up, discussing their appearance at PWG, um, how they drove Ricky Starks last week through a table by Jake Hager. Um, Starks in action. Uh, uh, Andrade comes comes out and they interrupt, and basically tells Jericho to shut up. And you know, it, it's it was it was one of those promos where it was just like. They're just trying to get through it. Again, was it the, one of the best uh, promos that Ricky Starks had done? Probably not. But it was just just a way just to say, hey, we're going to have Hager. It wasn't a bad, it wasn't a bad um, promo. I think uh, Andrade, or Andretti, um, did a, a good job on his own as well. Mm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you had... You had Starks basically say, Jericho, get out of the way. I want to talk to that Gilligan motherfucker. And, uh, <laughs> Didn't I thought, he call him a jazz hole or something like that? I can't remember, but the a best jazz part hole? is that. Yeah, it was a jazz hole. The, these oh jazz holes, jazz hole number one, jazz hole number two. But he, <laughs> but then you had uh, Hager saying, I'm going to slap your face off your face. And hilarious. obviously that was done on purpose, but hilarious well done love what what hagar is doing like he's sort of like he's taking sort of things in in stride you know they're gonna book him where they can it'd be great to honestly i'd book this guy a lot more differently i'd have him going against fucking um claudio i'd have him uh going against big guys morrissey for example or big bill um the, the yeah. guy's fucking amazingly good uh he is you know obviously he, he said it tonight an undefeated MMA fighter. I think Pro he's a, a MMA one fighter. he's fought one or two matches, I believe. But yeah, so regardless, is that he's taken in stride. He looks like he's having fun. I love it. I love the hat gimmick and stuff. Um, and it's it's fun. He's willing to, you know, basically work and He's you know, job yeah. sometimes. I, yeah. I wouldn't even call it jobbing. I no, mean, the guy. He, he made a guy. I'll tell you what it is. Over I'll tell you what he's and, trying to do. I'll tell you what it is. You're. This is what you want to say. He is making people look good. That's what he's doing. Exactly. He's making people and look legitimizing good. Legitimizing them. Are you glamming ways, me? Yeah. I mean, I Kevin could. Nash's own son glammed him. I mean, this guy's glamming people. If I could, I he would certainly be up there. I mean, he, he the guy is super powerful, and when he was booked properly, uh, and the We the People thing was a, a great uh, gimmick there in WWE, he, the guy had so much potential, and he's just he's a he's a powerhouse in the ring. People don't yeah. realize that. Right. Great athlete. 
Now, real quickly, I just want to say how long until Tony Khan buys this song and, and gives it to a wrestler. <laughs> how long until Separate Ways is somebody's theme song? Do you use it for a night or for the remainder of... I'm telling uh, you. Because if I was in AEW and Tony Khan was like, what do you want your music? I'd be like, you know what? Give me Separate Ways by Journey. And that probably is too expensive, quite honestly. Could, well, um, I could see um, Orange Cassidy coming out to that. Yeah. Sunglasses on. Yeah, have another one. But new ring attire, though. New ring attire. Yes. Hey, Maybe a little more neon. What yeah, you, I was gonna say. I'm waiting for ring attire that lights up completely while they're in the ring wrestling in it, and it's still spandex. You know what I mean? No one's really doing that. Where is it? When is that? I mean, it's 2023. Come on, let's go. Let's bring this on. Anyway, we got a few more minutes left here in the show to wrap oh, uh, this D. thing. Welsh, D. Welsh asked me to say to you um, that apparently he sent you a message um, of a fake pic of Steph and Trips at AEW. Oh yeah, oh, I yes. saw it too. Sent so it this to is the is messenger. this the picture that everybody's talking about? I yeah, don't know. I, I'm just letting oh. you know that he's he sent me two there messages. See, I thought it was a cardboard cutout of them was in the audience. <laughs> that would even, oh, my God, that'd be even better. See, that would have been what I... See, I thought there was, like, someone had bought the seats and had them sitting there. Like, that would... <laughs> Take a photo with Tony Khan and them behind. That would have cracked me up, dude. <laughs> I would have died laughing. So, um, after the... Um... By the way, who wants to buy me a Diablo 4 hat? Because my wife ended up getting one, and now I'm jealous. And she barely even plays Diablo compared to me. What the fuck's going on? You're a man of many hats, Joe. I love these type of hats. Where's my Diablo 4 hat? Come on, it's on Blizzard Shop. Anybody? Okay. I love anyway. This hat. I love this. I love that woman, too, by the way. Look at that hat. Oh, my God. I love that hat. But Oh, my mm, Lord. That hat is beautiful. I want to take that on her. I want to jizz all over that hat. Oh, that would ruin uh, it. TMI. I want to jizz all over that hat, bro. I love that hat. Oh, I can't um... wait for Diablo 4. Sorry. All right, so yeah, let's I also love my, up, I, right? I love my, I love my wife's hair and lips and body. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, um, I think this is where it was said. Um, okay, so I don't yeah. know who said it earlier. I think they were wrong about spoiling the main event, but I, I could be wrong there. But okay, so Taz, yeah, somebody said Taz. Okay, so it. during the slap your face thing, where um, Stark says, "Okay, I challenge you to have this match with me, Hagar, next week." And then it was Taz at that point, I believe. No, sorry, it was uh, Excalibur, actually, who mentions that the match was already made earlier by Tony <laughs> Khan. So, uh, because uh, apparently a graphic mentioned it. So that that's a little slip up there that obviously, you know, is a nitpick that people have. But Yeah. Well, that's just another one to add to. See, the problem is he does it all the time. I just don't understand. But I guess this is what he does. I I, I really did, was not aware that Taz was this fucking wall breaking, cafe breaking psycho. Like I had no idea about this until now. You know, now at this point, it's not fun anymore. Like last couple of weeks, I'm like, I can't believe you said that. Now it's just sort of like, oh, he doesn't. He's retarded. Okay. All right. You were in the wrestling business. You would think you would know not to say this because because Taz would go on his podcast all the time and he would take shots at me and other people and say things like, oh. You know, we did this in the business, and we know more than everybody else, obviously. These other guys come on here try to pretend like they're the news guys. Nah, dude, we're doing what you're doing, criticizing the product. And you know what? I'm going to criticize you. You break the fourth wall all the time and ruin it. Okay? So, you, you know, but Taz, again, is good in some aspects. Never really loved him. But good Lord, breaking the fourth wall in kayfabe every week is not acceptable, in my opinion. It's, Yeah. Forgive Sorry. him once in a while. Once in a while, things happen. You make a mistake. This is so. Yes, Sorry. go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, Dave. Because we right. gotta go. Well, here. Um, I don't know if Rostov is still alive, but uh, we're live. I, I want him to take the lead here. I'm tagging you in, but I want to announce it first that uh, this uh, final match was for the AEW World Trios Championship Best of Seven match, the Escalera de la Muerte match. De la Muerte. Not happy. Uh, the first thing I'll say is not happy with the time allotted. This is the seventh yeah. match of this big series. It should have started at least uh, at I would say ten at nine thirty-five. I would have accepted nine thirty-five. I can't believe. Tony, well, 
They had tw- they had about they had fourteen minutes to wrestle. And that's what I said. I wanted to even ask you guys this, like you know, be as it may, like do you feel like the Brian Danielson or the uh, the the women's tag match should have been shorter slightly just to give more time to no, the main event? No, Jericho should have been eliminated from that. They didn't need the Jericho segment. Hmm. I'm fine with everything I mean, else. It, they did announce that uh, that Khan was allowing for the match to go as long as it needed. Now they went okay. one minute over. They went one minute okay. over, but I remember them basically announced, "Okay, well, Tony Khan has announced that this match will go as long as it needs to." Hmm. Yeah. Now, they, you mean, know what get... though? But let me let me just also fire back at that. They've okay. been doing that recently a lot, and you know what? Every single time they do it, to their credit, I'm going to make two points here. First of all, it never runs over. That's number one. The next thing is sometimes it does end earlier. So that yeah. does that does give it the illusion that they, you know what I mean? But, True. again, they have been saying it so much that it means very little to me. But the one thing I will appreciate is sometimes it does end earlier. So it will end at 9.56 or 9.55. And we've said this on the shows when that happens. We're like, what the fuck? They still got four minutes. And then there's all this dilly-dallying and the show ends. And I remember people complaining in the chat, what the fuck, there's still five minutes. Well, what do you want, the show to end exactly at 10 every single week? You know what I mean? So I actually give them credit there, but they never run over. So that's, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be nice if once in a while they could run over to sort of make us believe that. And right now, unless it ends early, so then that would just make it seem like there's even less time. So that's a problem. So I think there was a problem with timing. And and you could tell right away they were rushing everything. Right from the beginning, they were hitting spots, like, right away. It was like, you know, and, and I'm like, man, someone's going to get hurt with them rushing to get all their things in. So it, Well, you know, they did this last week where they ran over just about a minute over. And, again, it's like it's just now going to be a thing where, as you said, and as you pointed out, like, you know, is this going to be a consistent thing? And is it going to lose its, like, grandeur if they keep on doing that? Because WWE did that for years. And it was sort of kind of being cut and dry as like, you know, is this a good thing to do? Because everybody just expects it. And, yeah, I do feel that the match should have gotten more respect as far as timing goes and make those spots mean more because they were crunching every high spot, every table spot, every ladder spot within a matter of only minutes. And, again, just like we were talking about before with the, the Danielson match, I mean, again, we had the chance to breeze. People were able to get their wits about themselves after every big move. But man, it, it it's it, it was it was just not good for what it could have been. But yeah, especially as the final match of the best of seven. Right. Um, I, I mean, I regardless of who whoever won, I mean, I personally felt like they made the right decision with um, with the elite, especially since that they got dealt a bad hand, especially during the whole punk situation. That was four months ago, and four months later, they basically get back the titles that they never lost, really. So. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, I gave the show a seven. Uh, there were some high points, there were some low points, but um, hold on, you're yeah. oh, you're glossing over this last match, dude. This last <laughs> match was fucking yeah, incredible. It was awesome. It was a car. It was fucking. There was table I mean, yeah, spots. Callis was, no, no, was, was on commentary. There was massive support for um, um, Death Triangle. But you also saw a lot of uh, support for um, the elite, including people singing along to uh, Wayward Son. Foreigner song, yeah. There was, I mean, there was a 450 splash by, uh, was it Matt? I think it was Nick. Um, or Nick, sorry. And um, there was, I believe, a, a tombstone onto, I think it was, Ome- was it Omega that did the tombstone onto Penta Jr. Um, or P- Penta Mio. Um, Onto the the ladder as it was the secondary ladder that was on the ropes and yes. the, the oh no 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 it was the I thought it was the one wing angel right off the um no no, the well, no no hold on that was after that was after oh, yeah 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 it yeah. was basically a tombstone not a tombstone sorry uh, uh um fuck I'm tired. <laughs> oh yeah I know yeah uh, it was pile a, driver a yeah. pile driver onto the uh onto the ladder and it it just looked incredible. And then there was the the one uh, winged angel, and uh, like off the ladder onto the mat, which came out great. And then obviously uh, Omega climbed on and got the title. But there were so many great spots in this match, uh, and all of them really did a great job. Because uh, the the match itself started off with a bang. They all started fighting each other and throwing each other out of the ring, and uh, some really great spots throughout for, from everyone really. It was like it was high octane, 
And uh, as always, with all these seven matches that we've seen, they go to show people. I think that people shit too much on the uh, on the young bucks uh, and Omega, but they show that when they when they have a situation like this, they can produce a great job, just like uh, uh, Death Triangle. And they all, all three, all both, both teams, all three of them work so well as a trio's team. It's fucking incredible. It came down to they entertained me, and that's all I care about. And sometimes, yes, the car crashes get old, but in some ways, but not tonight. I enjoyed that. I liked it. Oh, Dave, no, I, I wanted you to talk more about it. I wasn't trying to overshadow everything. I just wanted to basically get the summary of it down and then you, you breaking it down. No, I, oh, okay. I like the match for what it was. It's just that, again, yeah. No, I, I wanted, to, I wanted to talk about some of those spots because they were incredible. They yeah, really no, were. Absolutely. My, fa- my favorite spot was the 450 spot, as a matter of fact, because I think if I'm not mistaken, the Young Bucks' parents were actually in the crowd. <laughs> so I can only imagine on BT, um, BTE if they show like the footage of them like reacting to their boys is getting trashed all around you know, the ring. Gymnastics people do these routines where they got to do certain flips and things like that and score a 10 to get a gold medal and stuff like that. We saw about like 13 of those hit like tonight in this match, like, like shit that could have gone wrong, could have bounced the wrong way. Things in a could've... span of literally 18 to 17 minutes. It was, <laughs> yeah, and it was less. Break. It was Joe, definitely I less. I want to this. You had mentioned this, I think, on one of your streams recently. Like, what's that KN logo that's going around? Kia. That's the that's Kia. Yeah, we figured and, it out last. And well, I don't know if you heard about this, but th- the jump in searches for KN yep. as a car vehicle just increased dramatically because I guess their uh, designer of the logo didn't realize that people would just start to interpret it differently. So yeah, it uh, doesn't look like Kia. I, I was, was funny. Yeah, someone it looks like KN in a backwards end, like Russian I, almost. I actually know? thought it was you that told me this, but a week ago I figured this out on stream. I said, you know what, guys, there's the logo I'm talking about. And everybody was like, oh, that's the Kia logo. And I'm like, what the fuck did Kia do? I'm like, you can't even tell that's Kia. Like, it looks fucking crazy. And I've been trying to figure it out for like a year now when I'm driving down the road. And I'm like, what the hell car is that? And <laughs> so it's so funny that you brought that up. But, yeah, the, it's it's been driving me nuts. I didn't know. And then everybody's well, all over the, the uh, arena. I don't know if uh, Kia actually runs that arena or if they were just sponsoring the show. But uh, it was all over the place. It's like a fucking Nine Inch Nails logo almost. <laughs> yeah. It's the it's the Korean nine inch nails. Yeah, nine inch, oh rear, nine inch rears. I mean, I guess Korean write letters the way their faces look. But the bottom line is, it's it, it's weird looking, and it looks kind of cool and futuristic too. Though I like it, and it's it it sticks out really good. So good job on on Kia. I think it's just it's such a like because the, the old Kia the old logo boring. was boring. You know, it looked all round from it looked nineties actually the logo. What Dave? No, it looks no. It just uh, now it looks German. Kia yeah, now so. it looks now it looks industrial. You know, before it used to look like the Friends. The Russian. Yes, it used to look like the Friends theme. Now it looks really like you know metal and weathered and shit and cool. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, that's gonna do it, man. Got an early day tomorrow. Is there anything anybody else wants to say about AW? I'm gonna give it a seven point five tonight. Seven. All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna I, give it a seven five. I give it a I'll seven give it, seven five. I'll give it a seven. There you go. Sevens all around. Also, what do you guys think? I'm gonna go to the poll in a second. Go ahead, Dave. I'm going to say this. Um, it looks like, um, and this might also be timing as well. You talked about this earlier. People are saying, oh, you guys jumped onto this way too early, blah, blah, blah. No, we didn't. Okay. But uh, today it was announced that there's a class action lawsuit going on against uh, Vince McMahon. Did you read about that? Wait, say again. Yes. Yes. There's a, I was there's... just about to bring that up too. Hey, what? what? Okay, go ahead, Brony. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you, Dave, but you yeah. Go ahead. I, you, I've spoken enough. You can uh, tell us about the uh, class action lawsuit. So briefly from what I've heard from PW Insider's YouTube channel, um, it was one of the uh, shareholders who's suing uh, Vince for being in violation. Uh, let's see. It says here, a WWE investor named Scott Fellows sued McMahon in Delaware's Chancey Kurt, um, claiming McMahon breached the, <laughs> the... I'm not real 
good with um reading legalese words in English. Yes. F I D U C L. Let me let me let's just stop. Let's just stop all this really quickly. Are you sober? I am sober. Yes. Okay. Then let me ask you one other thing. Let me ask you one more thing. Have you masturbated on a pony today? No. That took way too long to answer. I'm just going to say that. Um, But no, that being said, I didn't hear anything you said because I was too, like, I was basically too busy in my own head trying to figure out if you're a retarded person. Summarize for you. He's getting sued uh, by more than one individual, one of them being a stockholder, stating that uh, he utilized his influence to bully his way back into the... uh, into company. control of the company and as such um, was able to intimidate um, stockholders, change stories, do all these sorts of things. So that's uh, that was actually launched today. The point in my bringing it up was it's right on the heels of what happened yesterday, which I did think about this, and I think we talked about this, where this would make sense, especially when you are trying to sell the company, because Vince McMahon, prior to this, came out and said, I'm coming back to the company, we knew that, Mm -hmm. because I need to be the one ushering in the sale of this company. He was public about it, and he said that people are going to have confidence in the sale of the company if I'm the one in charge of it. So it that gets purposely leaked. That yeah, you know, yesterday's news and stuff. Now they're saying, oh, they, no, that's not really true. Well, I've shown the proof. Saudi Arabia is first in line. That's part of the fucking deal that they made with Saudi Arabia in 2018. But now we get this announcement. Perhaps they were tipped off that this might happen, and therefore they released this information to boost the price of the stock, just like you said earlier today, Joe in anticipation that this was going to potentially affect the uh, at least the thought that could it be sold or not because the the, the shitstorm that happened yesterday showing so many people talking about this showed that there was interest that you know it also got all these other companies saying oh shit is is he selling it this and that so uh it looks very possible that if this was uh, in anticipation to the news that we got today about this uh uh, class action lawsuit, as well as potential many others, because some people are saying, oh, there's going to be now these sexual uh, harassment suits and such coming out. So something to consider. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this could be a full on sort of a Donald Trump situation where like or Alex Jones or something like that. You know, Vince is going to now come under fire from everybody yep. and their mother because, yeah, they're trying to so take him out sell it now. He has to sell it now before more of this shit comes at him. I mean, that's the other thing, too. I think, honestly, my personal reaction to this is, like, I don't think it's going to be, I mean, as much as, like, yeah, this can definitely be, you know, a dent in the in the, in the, in the armor here. It's not going to make much difference because at the end of the day, yes, he's the majority stockholder. But, again, you would also still have to get, you know, enough appeal, especially from the other board members, to see whether or not they actually want to file suit also on this as well if they support this. But then also there was also another rumor that we discussed yesterday where, Apparently, Stephanie and Triple H and a few other people in the in the the voting of trying to get Vince back allegedly were going to basically say, no, we're not voting for you to come back. And their votes apparently either did not count or they just did not vote at all. And yet, nonetheless, they were still outvoted and Vince got back. So, again, I, I, I. we don't know more other than just what we know now of it. So, again, we're only just going to have to see within the next couple of weeks to figure out how big this is actually going to be. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, I'll try to be, you know, up to date on it or going live if I can to cover this sort of stuff. And, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But I still think it's news. I still think it's sort of happening and that that it leaked out early. But, you know, maybe not. You know, again, I think Disney is the worst case scenario. I think Saudi Arabia is the second worst case scenario. I would rather go with someone safe like Peacock, Comcast. NBC, yeah. Yeah, NBC was always my pick uh, just because I just Saudi Arabia. Sense. I agree with the one D. Wow. Saudi Arabia must be the one to own it. I can't believe it, but Dave wants Wandi. I mean, so what? <laughs> Hocus. <laughs> yo. Y- English is becoming our second language tonight, yo. Yeah, it really is. I mean. It always was for me. That's true. I mean, this is like a third language <laughs> now. Um, Dave's pretty good with the English language, you know. I can't even learn hey, a second language, really. I, I, I don't work, basketball uh, dance off the concrete. Oh. 
I mean, I'm Bacharo. just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. Bisharo. I'll be was, honest. I'm like Mike didn't work all night. Your face. Why does Vince have to be the most retarded old man out there? The man sounds like a zombie when he talks, and he's on steroids. Joe Biden? The Saudi Arabia people is what? going to bring back Mohammed Hassan, great Khali to be WWE champion. Vince is becoming Hitler. I, I swear to God you just described Joe Biden, but... You raised a piece of shit! Rastafa, did you say European? scooby dooby douchebag. Ha ha. <laughs> Hoped MJF would make joke about Freddie Prince's dad. Oh. I'll give you two words to why Big Bill sucks. Big Joshua that was doink dressed as Paul Bunyan in early 90s WCW. Well, I mean, I guess Big Bill could carry around a dead pheasant with him to the ring. That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> You know that you raised a piece of shit. Well, imagine a hook and jungle boy team while Pat Patterson was alive. He would cream in his slacks. Wayward son is Kansas, not foreigner. Gar guts is foreigner. Death triangle was nicknamed for Meikle's mom's snatch in college. Ooh. R.I.P. Jeff Beck and Trevor Story's elbow. Good lord. Apologies, Jesus. Kansas, not foreigner. There you go. It's a different white b- well, person, for a man. Buck? They got to say all that for a bar. I know. I really got to get rid of the dollar donation. This just ain't right. Are we still praising Allah? Um. Well, Awandi is in the chat. No, well, uh, both Joe and I are because um, we're more than willing to move there and uh, start jobs uh, for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as yep. uh, workers for WWE. And maybe my wife will shut up a little bit when we're out there, too. Like, shut her mouth a little bit, you know? Like, maybe be... Just, yeah. you know, just police that will help you out with that, so... Yeah. Officer, officer, my wife's getting a little lippy. Can you take care of this? Yeah, maybe, 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 you know, my wife will keep her mouth trap shut a little bit. Or, or maybe I'll have to tell the local cops there, hey, you know, I think I caught her making out with a chick, and that's why I'm angry, you know? <laughs> Next thing you know, they cut her legs off. Thank you for telling us. We will take care of it for you. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Enjoy this uh, great shawarma. It's delicious. I really I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, a, we have a, a masked man here with us in, right here in the chat. Oh, my God. It's Pisharo. He's I think he's finally ready to go. Pisharo, how you doing? Good. Ray, you got his mic working. You got your mic working, baby. What's up? I just don't want to interrupt. That's it. No, it's okay. I'm glad. I'm glad we got you on here finally. What's up, man? What'd you think tonight? I didn't. I didn't really watch. I was sleeping. Oh my. God. All right. Well, Pajaro. Things killing me, so I didn't want to watch anything. Well, it's well, a different product. It's a good show. Now. It's a good show. Yeah. They really ruined, ruined my whole week. Soon, so. I want to. There's a part. Really, you're gonna let Vince ruin your week. Vince ruin your just, week. Look! Look at the smile that Tony Khan ha- has on his face. His look love and joy when he gives people face. hugs. Pajaro, how can you get angry at that? Let me ask you another question. How many? How many people have you killed today or this year? Like I just in general, how many people have you killed? You killed a fish once. <laughs> That's how it starts. That's how it starts. I'm just saying. Just saying. First it was an ant, then it was a fish, then it was a human being. You know? Listen, Pisharo, I think, is a murderer. That's just me, based on his imagery, on his Discord. Just how autistic are you, Pisharo? That's all I want to know. No, but uh, seriously, we're out of here. I got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. You guys are the best, uh, Devious Dave. Uh, hang real on. Real quick, I got something. Uh, there's something real quick I want right. to add. Let me see. You tell me, Pony, what happened? I'm looking at it now. Um, somebody oh who used to work for with the WWE, but the uh, work with um, combat sports. She actually took to Twitter today. No. Uh, in regards to the the news that broke last night about the WWE, mm-hmm. um, being sold to Saudi Arabia, and she says this, contrary to reports starting. Um, stating otherwise last night, there's no deal in place at this precise moment for WWE to be sold to Saudi Arabia's public invest investment fund. You know what? Or any pony. I love you to death, but I made a video on this earlier. You know, you did. Oh, you did. Yeah, he did. And you yeah, know, they did. I'm kind of kind of sad that you didn't watch it. To be honest. Yeah, where are you not getting notifications, bro? Uh, how bell. did you not watch it? I'm sad now. Pony, I'm sad. I'm as sad as you, like, when you're, you know, inside of a pony, you know. 
Um, but no, so I, I love. It didn't show up in my subscriptions, and I know I'm subscribed to you. Too. I know, but that's see, that's why you got to go on and just check it like a maniac all the time and become. A you got to ring that bell, homie, and ring that's the bell. That's what I've been doing. I've been checking. I do. I, I have. I do have the notifications on too. So yeah, I'm see, not sure why. No, it's not you, man. It's I get YouTube. Most of your videos, but for yeah. some reason. That that one you made on that just didn't come through. Well, I, I think a lot of people didn't see it because it's like a barely. I don't even think it's a two thousand views, so it definitely didn't get seen by a lot of people. It's not you. I'm just joking around. Um. So with that being said, Dave, stick around for a second. I gotta ask you something. Um. Everybody, thank you for being here tonight. We'll catch you again tomorrow. Uh. For some shit. Soundwave ninety two with the twenty nine. Uh. Thank you very much, man. That's the top dono. A couple of good donos coming in from... Uh, Steady. Yeah, Devious Dave. I'm going to cornhole him off the air. Mastro's World, Pisharo, Blair Eliason, Magpole Mike, The Soundwave 92, Michael Cole Gage. Joe, if you want that hat, I'll get it for you. You you have to wait for a bit. Because, I'm just kidding. No, you don't have to get it for me. I'm just kidding. I was kidding around. Nobody... I actually don't get it for me. It's okay. I was just kidding around. You, you, you're the best. I love you, brother. No, you're good. You're you're a good guy too. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm good. It's it's like a it's like nineteen bucks. I can get it. I'm just joking around. I just wanted to uh, make my wife uncomfortable by showing her. You know. All right, everybody, we're out. We'll see you tomorrow. And okay. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna plug. I'm gonna go plug someone's new age asshole. We'll see you guys. Okay. Cool. I'm coming for you, man. <laughs>